All right, so in this section, we're going to look at doing um, just the headings and then getting the buttons to work, more or less. So we're not going to do any styling until the end. Uh, typically, I like to make sure that the functionality is actually working before I start to style it. Some people might disagree with that methodology. Uh, some of them will do the CSS first, so they have everything exactly laid out where they want it to be, and that helps them like kind of go through a checklist, and then they can build out their JavaScript based on like the design they've already made. Uh, I do it the other way. So I, I want it to work first, then I do the design second. Um, instead of our code just saying anything, uh, you can delete that. And now you should have a blank space between your body tags. Um, mine, I have like an autosave feature uh, on the body tags where um, It'll compress them if there's space there, so you can just go ahead and click enter and put it back. Now, you may have run into an issue in the last video uh, in which nothing showed up on your page. Uh, if nothing showed up on your page, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to save your VS Code file. So that, that's a really common issue um, that people run into, and just by saving it, it'll update. If you don't save it, it will not update when you refresh the page. So if you have any updating, any updating issues, uh, the two things you should do is you should first file a save, and then subsequently you can go over to your page, you can refresh it. Uh, if that doesn't work, you can just exit out of the page entirely, and then uh, go back to it, which I have to find where, even where I put it. Uh, here it is. And then you can just open it back up on the website that you're using, or the browser you're using of your choice, and then it should be here. So. I don't have anything on the page, it's completely blank, it's white, but that's a pretty common issue you might run into. Uh, regardless, we're going to go back to having uh, both the body tags open with nothing in them, and then we're going to type uh, h1. So again, we have, we have two tags here, and these are h1 tags. h1 stands for heading 1. Uh, this goes from 1 to 6, so that means there's heading 2, heading 3, heading 4, heading 5, and heading 6. And it's important that you remember that both the opening and the closing tag need to be exactly the same. So they both have to have h1 in it, otherwise it won't work. Um, in between this h1, you're going to type a word of some kind. So we're going to have like a heading. We'll do wood first because that's going to be the first uh, like value that we have our first resource I guess so we'll have wood and what's gonna happen when I save this uh, I'm just hitting command s but it could be control s if you're on Windows or you can again just go into file save um, you're gonna go over to your website refresh it and then you should see wood pop up so that's our h1 um, heading 1 is the biggest heading heading 6 is the smallest heading so if I change it to h6 I go back to the page, I click refresh, you're going to see it's tiny now. So you basically can't even see it on the page. Again, we come back here, go to H1, uh, and then it's going to be really big again. So there we go. Now remember, just one more time, every time that you change anything in your page, go ahead, file save, go back, and then click refresh, and it'll pop up. All right, so to, con to continue on, uh, what we want to do is we want to make a button. So, as you might have guessed, uh, this is a button tag. So, uh, a shortcut is you can just type in the name, and then you can either click tab or click on the or where it says button here, and it'll give you the two tags. For a lot of programmers, it's all about writing as little as possible because we're really lazy. Um, so, in between these button tags, you can write a word. So maybe we're going to say chop tree. Makes sense. That's how you get wood. Um, we go back to our web page and click refresh. There you go. You have chop wood. Now it doesn't do anything. So I have chop tree. Sorry, not chop wood. But when we click on it, it doesn't do anything. It does look like a button. It has all the functionality of the button where you can hover over it and you can see it slightly changes color and it looks like we're clicking on it but uh, we're not getting anything to actually change when we click on it. Now we want the number to go up, right? We want us to actually see the number increment. So 
Something we can do is we can use JavaScript. Now, what I recommend is that you do it in a separate file. Uh, a lot of people, when they're starting out, they'll do it in the same file, which is perfectly fine in the beginning, but it gets really messy. So it's kind of good practice to just start off with the JavaScript in the second file, and then you can always circle back if you are having trouble with that and maybe do it on the same page. But you should really move away from that in the beginning because it's gonna give you uh, like a better best practice as you move forward. So over here on the left where we have index.html, we can click on that new file button again, or you can right click anywhere in the blank space, click new file, and then you can do game.js, you can name it app.js, you can name it uh, main.js, as long as it is JS in it. So before I code anything in here, we want to make sure that they're connected. So our HTML file and our JavaScript file have to be combined together, otherwise nothing's going to show up that we make function. So we head over to the HTML and we put it above the closing body tag. So right above where this closing tag is right here on line 12, we're going to go ahead and we're going to write script. Now you want to pick the script colon src option. Click on that and this is what you'll get. If it doesn't pop up, just type it out the exact same way and as long as it's written the same way, you're good. If you run into any problems through all of this, it's probably just a spelling issue. And I know it's really tough, but you're going to have to go through. You're going to need to look word by word, letter by letter, and make sure it's typed the exact same way because it will work if everything is the exact same. Sometimes when you get frustrated and it's not working, uh, what you can do is you can just delete what you did and then type it out again. And usually that'll fix the issue because there was a spelling issue somewhere. You just might not have been able to see it. So just do it again and it'll probably work. So right here in the SRC, we need to put the actual source. So what's the source of our JavaScript? Well, the source of our JavaScript is game.js. So we can come over here and put game.js in and then that's it, uh, it's linked. So something we can do to test this is console.log. So go over to your game.js file, which you should be able to do on the top here or on the left side, you should be able to toggle between the two. Uh, type in console.log, followed by two parentheses, and then two quotes. Inside of these quotes, um, we can type the word test in, and then test is gonna give us pretty much everything we need to know to be able to test out our actual code. So open up your uh, web page again, refresh it, Make sure it's saved. So for this one, you need to make sure everything's saved on both files. So you can just file uh, save all if you want to, or actually I don't even have a save all option. So you might have to uh, go between each and file save them. Mine's not unlocked because I don't think either of them needs to be saved, but you should be able to click it if it's that way. Regardless, open up your page. And here is where some fun happens. So you're gonna wanna right click anywhere on the web page you click inspect and then you will have this console. Now, this is only gonna work in Google Chrome. There's other ways to inspect on Firefox, there's other ways to inspect on Safari. I'm not gonna go into those right now. Uh, I recommend that you just use Google Chrome if you can't figure out how to, or honestly, just use, like look it up on Stack Overflow and they'll give you the answer. Um, once you have this open, this is called the Chrome DevTools, uh, you're gonna look to the top right here. It says element, console, sources. It might not show up because it might be really condensed. So you just wanna uh, take this little arrow here and drag it out till you can see everything. Or you can click on the two uh, greater than signs and then you'll be able to see console. So console is the one you're looking for. Click on console and you'll see test. So that's what we wrote right here. Console.log test. So what we're doing is we're logging the word test to the console. And the console is just the JavaScript console. This is what like our JavaScript runs in to make it work on the page. So once we're done with that, you can exit out of it. It's connected. Uh, if that doesn't work, what you want to do is check right here. Make sure the spelling is the same. Make sure you have a semicolon at the end. Make sure you have your quotes. Make sure it's all the same. 
If that doesn't work, check your script. Usually it might not have been linked properly. Those are going to be the two most common issues. So that's about it for linking them together. And then in the next one, we're going to work on actually getting the button to function. So thanks and have a good rest of your day.